Hey everyone, welcome back to Dead Mall Walking. Today we are going to be answering the age-old question. Why is TJ Maxx called TK Maxx in the UK, elsewhere in Europe and Australia? In fact, if we discount Marshalls, one third of the Max brand operates internationally as TK Maxx rather than TJ Maxx as it's known in the US. To find out why, we need to go all the way back to the year 1912. More than a hundred years ago, Thomas J. Hughes opened his first store in Liverpool. The store took off, expanding gradually until there were almost 60 TJ Hughes stores across the UK by the end of the 20th century. Some of them including acres upon acres of bed linens. When TJ Maxx opened their first UK store in 1994, they decided it would be unwise to compete against this retail powerhouse, which had flowed on the stock market just a couple of years earlier. To avoid confusion, they created the sub-brand TK Maxx for their first store in Bristol. If they'd waited one year more, they could have used the Marshalls brand, which they acquired in 1995 instead, avoiding a ton of headaches. Fire exit stairwell no one. Haiku or a coded cry for help. Since then, TK Maxx has expanded rapidly across the United Kingdom and now has almost 350 stores here. TJ Hughes must be doing similarly well, right? Hmm, not so much. In 2020, they have just 18 stores remaining in the UK. Well, at least that's up from the six locations they had after entering administration in 2011. TJ Hughes's products are a mix of clothing, luggage, gardening equipment, home furnishings, and just about anything else you can think of. With the exception of apartment dwellers living locally, who wants to carry furniture and homewares to a busy town centre to wherever they manage to park their car just to get them home? It's not that the products in TJ Hughes are bad per se, it's more that they're wildly inconsistent. Look at all these rugs, can you imagine trying to find something specific in this place? The company was sued for damages by Fred Perry in 2018 for selling thousands of fake polo shirts in their stores and online ultimately settling for an undisclosed amount of money and handing over a ton of remaining bootleg merch to Fred Perry. It amazes me that a retailer like this could make this sort of costly mistake. You might notice that I'm going against the Covid arrows here. Fortunately, there were very few people in the store to complain, or even notice. It's hard to say what went so badly wrong for TJ Hughes, but I have a theory. Throughout the 80s, 90s and 2000s, homeware brands like B&M and The Range expanded rapidly. These stores typically opened in retail parks and on the outskirts of suburban areas, rather than city centres like TJ Hughes, where rents just keep going up. Then, at the other end of the scale, TJ Hughes continues to face stiff competition in fashion from the likes of TK Maxx. And I haven't even begun to talk about the sheer volume of stock that these places have on hand. Liquidation must be virtually impossible unless you can sell these things in batch to another department store. And realistically, how much longer will those opportunities be around for? I'll admit that I have a soft spot for the cafe in this place and the mural in the kids zone that reminds me of The Last of Us. 
Plus, that carpet reminds you of one of those Chinese restaurants that feel like they're in somebody's living room. And then there's the e-commerce side of things. The future, right? TJ Hughes' website is attractive enough, but it's unreliable and feels incomplete. At the time of recording this video, I did a quick search to see what I could find on it. I filtered by brand and gender, Nike, men's, and found that, unlike on this shop floor, they had just one lonely pair of sweatpants available in small and medium only. It's ironic that TJ Hughes refers to themselves as a THE discount department store. Maybe there was a time when that was true, but it's just not the case anymore. The store advertises a clearance event throughout, with those trademark yellow signs. But like various other retailers in the UK, sofa store DFS immediately springs to mind. It's mostly for show. You get the feeling that if you try to haggle at the register, you might almost be able to get away with it. The desperation to keep stock moving is that palpable here. And unsurprisingly, coronavirus hasn't helped on that front. Just this month, part of TJ Hughes went into administration and two of its stores are closing as a result. As we round out the video, we'll take a walk through TJ Hughes' gardening section. Because what city centre shopper doesn't want to carry a full-size gazebo back to the car through the hustle and bustle of the British High Street? What if TJ Maxx could go back in time? Would they retain the TK Maxx sub-brand or plow ahead with keeping their brand consistent across Europe and Australia as TJ Maxx instead? In the state it's in today, it's difficult to imagine the powerhouse that is TJX feeling threatened by TJ Hughes, but I guess that's the benefit of hindsight. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I wanted to film in here because I can't imagine this store being around forever. Please like and subscribe for more, and my Instagram is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching, and goodbye from TJ Maxx. Uh, make that Hughes. <laughs>